Today, I'm headed south on PCH, driving the 2019 GMC Terrain. And I'm going over into the valley. It's kind of foggy here, so I'm not really leaving any sun behind. It's probably gonna be sunny there. But I'm gonna introduce you guys to Chris Garcia, who is one of the artists that's gonna be featured at the Fireball Gallery on May 11th. He's gonna be in the three month show. Uh, he's a painter, an automotive painter and fabricator. I was told that he's got quite a few cars and an interesting studio to take a look at. So I'm gonna introduce you to his uh, his work, himself, some of his cool cars and uh, check some things out. And if we manage to spot something cool along the way, that's good too. Chris Garcia, an amazing artist with incredible stuff, and you're about to meet him. Garcia. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Thanks for you. having me over. Uh, Chris, amazing artist, amazing painter, and um, excited about having you in the gallery. Thank you. Lots of good stuff, but you have a quite a background, not only in cars, but you live in a in a house that um, is like a time machine. I try. Yeah. I try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, why, why this period of time for you? Uh, I don't know. I've always been fascinated with early design, so like, 30s, 40s, and 50s, like just the Art Deco, the mid-century modern, just just the design at the time was just really exciting to me. And like, same thing with the cars, you know. So it's just kind of a lifestyle that I just live. Are you one of those guys that would say I, I should have lived at that time? Oh yeah, definitely born in the wrong era. Yeah. So we're gonna take a look at some of the cars you have okay. at your studio. Uh, some of the art. We don't want to show you everything because we want you to come to the gallery <laughs> and enjoy that. But uh, tell me a little bit about your style. You know what? What uh, as far as painting? So right now my paintings are based on like '50s horror films. Um, so the, the posters. So I have my own brand called the Betty Hunters, <laughs> and so the Betty Hunters is it's it's my artist name, yeah. but it's always the monster coming after the hot girl. So. Yeah. Uh, it just makes it fun for me, so um, I paint posters based on that, and then I started doing a, mo a motor series. Right. So then I started doing um, a series of different motors that, that we're all used to, flatheads, four bangers, mm -hmm. you know, popped up Cadillacs and all that kind of stuff. And then the artwork is uh, like a horror theme poster. So with the, the, motor motor, the motors are the monsters. The motors are the monsters, right. yes. Going yes. after the Bettys. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, for, well, actually for me, I don't do a lot of uh, swap meets and I don't do a lot of well we used to do a little estate sales but a lot of my stuff I find and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a restorator so a lot of things that I will find something and I'll restore it so I'm, I'm again I'm kind of saving history and I don't really think of it that way but it's also a, it's, it's financially it works for me you know what I mean well, where do you find this stuff you know I live in the valley here in LA so in Burbank and all these richer neighborhoods where and I've lived in some of them so people will put stuff out on purpose so they'll put it in the alley and hoping somebody will save it and I happen to be the guy, you know. So a lot of my stuff, 
you know, like these chairs. I found the chairs, and, uh, and they had a little bit of ribs, so I painted the bottoms, and I added the little stars to them, and then the same thing with the uh, little coffee tables. And the best thing is they swivel. And they swivel, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah, I would love to know where those came from. Yeah, I have no idea. But like other things that I'll make, so I, I made that shelf for an antique store that we used to sell at. So I made that shelf. And all these pieces. And all these pieces, just like this lamp. Somebody restored this house down the street. They took the lamp out of the house and threw it in the wood pile. And it was a, it was a lamp of three. So two of, one of them broke. And I was able to get that one, and the other one's over there. I rewired it, and I saved it, you know, so give it second life. Yes, yeah, you're a custodian of uh, mid-century <laughs> modern. I mean, I get lucky. Those things are worth a lot of money, you know? Uh, no, I just put this together the last two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was all just empty and you know white walls and stuff. So I've been decorating it, putting all my adventure stuff up. And this is a you said a '51 Ford shoebox. Yep. Thirty. Uh, Thirty Model A. Model A, mm -hmm. and um, but this one has a particular story. Yes. Right. Yes. That one is a little closer to your heart. Yes. Yeah. Tell Very me a little close. bit about that one. So the Model A, um, a few couple years ago. Um, my dad was about to retire, so I told him, "Hey, you know, let's." Uh, he's a car guy, I painted all his life and stuff. So, Dad, let's, you know, let's build you a car for your retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He always wanted a '58 Chevy, but he's always been a hot rider too. And I said, "Okay." So I ran the numbers. I said, "We can build a '58 Chevy for this much. It's pretty expensive for a project." I said, "Or we can build you a hot rod." And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, I'm listening." I said, "Okay." So I said, "Why don't you come to the shop?" And I worked at the shop at the time. I was like. Let's look at the difference between a 32 or we can build a Model A because with a Model A, it's like half the price. Yeah. All right, so we started looking into it. I ran numbers and so we got excited. So I found this car. Uh, it was up in uh, Grass Valley, up by Sacramento. Talked to the guy online, good price. And the guy was like, you know, and he was nice enough to hold it for me. I said, you know, hold it for me. I won't haggle if you hold it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it says Father Son Project. Okay, cool. So I went up there and got it. And we towed it down, and, and it was a bad winter that month, that that winter. So kind of sat in the garage, and and uh, we couldn't he couldn't get to it. We kind of cleaned the garage, and unfortunately, my, my dad passed away like three months later. And how did he die? A heart. Yeah. Yeah. So. He so was, you, you uh, never got to work on it at all together. He never got to work on. He never even got to wash it. Oh. And so it just it just it, it, it kills me. And when we got the car, it was bone stock original. Somebody mm -hmm. had probably restored it in the mm -hmm. in the nineties, you know. A lot of these did, so. Yeah. Now I'm building it, and luckily we had already been going to car shows and looking at stuff and making a list. Okay, how how much a chop do you like? Do you like that, Dad? You, what what about these wheels? You know, and he's like, oh, because he was he kind of grew up in the street rod era, yeah. so it was nice to, that he was listening to me. Like, let's do a traditional style. And we we're going to shows, so you know, I, I was surprised he liked the 44 wheels. He liked the white walls, and and we looked at the chops. We sat in some. I had him sit in some. Like, you fit. He, my dad was short. He was only five three. I'm six one. So of course he would fit. But I didn't know if I would, you know, so um, I've been building it as a tribute to him and everything that he wants. So right now it's in the first phase. He wanted fenders. I argued and argued with my dad. No, 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 let's not get fenders. Right. He wanted fenders. He was adamant. I said, okay, I'll, I'll put the fenders back on. Yeah.
I've been making signs and things as a tribute to him. He never opened his own shop, so I've been making signs that, with his name on it. His nickname was Easy, and so I made a race team for me and him. So I called it Easy and Son Drag Racing, and that's what I painted on the car. And then I decided to call the car the Garcia Special, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, it's beautiful. And so, how far away are you uh, from getting it complete? What, what's what's the goal? He didn't want the four cylinder. He didn't want you know the mechanical brakes. It says mechanical brakes. He didn't want any of that. So I bought a whole new frame ready to go that's been boxed and ready for a small block, an automatic, and a 9 inch rear end. So that's going to go underneath it. We're literally just going to use the body and the fenders. And I am gonna, I was going to keep that frame and four banger and then just throw a roadster body or something on it and it's going to become two cars and we'd both be able to drive yeah. around and have fun. You know? So it's I need to go through and get the chassis ready and, and that's the original motor. This is a 307 that actually came out of his truck. Because um, he had a 69 GMC, which I own now too, but that's the original motor. So I want to put that motor in his hot rod. And so I've been hopping it up, getting the, the three, three deuces and stuff. Nice. This is like uh, really cool to me. This is, uh, this is one of my prized possessions. This is actually my uncle's old license plate. Now, my uncle, he lived up north, didn't really see him a whole lot, you know, and he, he had passed away a few years ago, and I was up visiting his wife, and we're looking through the garage, and like this, it was just untouched, right? All his stuff, all his little trinkets. He had stuff like me, you know, stuff. And I look up, and I was like, where did this come from? And she was like, that was his car. And I never even knew that the car existed, right? So he had a 74 Impala got personal license plates for it and he had hydraulics on it and he used to drop it and do whatever and he just he used to scrape so much from it being low that you can see it just it just rolled it under from from driving it around with hydraulics on it and the fact that it's blue it says low 74 like that's just the perfect like 80s low rider like it I was like I have to have that you know and, and thank god she let me have it because you know, I just it's just my one of the coolest things I've ever seen, you know, family heirloom, I guess. Way too laid back as an artist. Um, <laughs> five years, five years, man. Where where do you see the art? Where do you want to go with this stuff in the next five years? Well, I'm, I'm doing the motor series, so I'm, there's a couple more engines I want to do to kind of you know get everybody involved. Maybe do some motorcycle stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, right now I'm actually getting back on my Betty Hunter, my pulp, you know, like the the pulp stuff. So, right. Um, been shooting, and I'm doing a little bit more photography. So you know, a lot of pinup stuff going on. Cool. So. So where, where can people go online to, to uh, start following you? Uh, they can go on Instagram as the Betty Hunter, um, 
And then uh, I have my website is also thebettyhunters.com. Right, and you got yeah. prints that you can buy there and all that prints stuff. Prints of too. the motor series, yeah, there's four right now. So there's the four, the, the flathead, the four banger, um, the Buick, uh, and then I forget what the other one, the Cadillac motor. Yeah, so uh, buy a print, bring it to the uh, Fireball Gallery, have them sign it. There you go. Rocking. Thank, Thank you, man. All right, man. Great Thank stuff. Thank you, man. Good things okay. coming. Cool.